how does it appear? e4, d5, e takes, knight f6, and c4. And here, of all the possibilities, I actually vote for e6. It has a very interesting name. Maybe you heard of it. It's Icelandic Gambit or Icelandic Pound Variation. Uh, Icelandic Gambit is great and a very creative opening for black. I like it because it's full of sacrifices. It's great for, uh, you know, like catching your opponent off guard and unprepared. And I can't wait to see how your opponents are going to deal with this opening if they play c4. Uh, I also s found that in many articles and magazines, uh, some even good GMs uh, suggest c6 instead of e6. That can transpose to panel variation of the Karakan. My vote goes to Icelandic Gambit or Icelandic Pal variation with e6. After d takes, bishop takes, uh, here a uh, position can go uh, into three different variations. The most solid one, knight f3. Uh, a pretty passive one, bishop e2, which doesn't care so much about the center. And a very tempting one where white just takes the center, but probably the worst one and the risky. The riskiest one by white, but it doesn't look good. So you just go with the bishop before. You have to be very energetic here. You play bishop before, and you just you know, you just want to punish your opponent unless they go with uh, bishop d2. Uh, what happens if they play knight c3? Uh, I have to tell you an interesting story. When I was like 16 or 17 and when I was like around 2300, uh, the very first time I had to confront this opening, I was white and I played d4 fifth move. Uh, that's why I'm telling you, you can expect your opponents to go with this very tempting logical move, but probably the worst in this position. So after bishop e4, I played knight c3 myself. I didn't play bishop d2, and my opponent played knight e4. How did I manage to win this game? Nobody knows. Uh, but basically, this is already almost lost position. Don't forget about this one. Look at these bishops. Look at the activity of our pieces and enjoy. They can't play bishop d2 because of queen d4. They can't play knight g2 because of bishop c4. They have to play queen d3. And guess what? We play bishop f5. Look at our bishops. Look at these diagonals. Look at uh, how big number of threats we have at the moment. If they play queen e3, you just go castles, put the king in a safety, threaten knight c3, rook e8, or rook e8 straight away. If they go bishop d2, you just go castles again. They go castles, you take on c3. Queen is threatened by this bishop. So they have to take, we take the rook, they take the bishop, we take the pawn, they take the bishop, the rook, sorry, and we take on f2. Problem is, they can't uh, save this bishop, they can't play queen c8, rook is kind of trapped on h1, and because we threaten checkmate in one move. And that's the problem, and this is just winning for black, happened in some game played in Poland back to 1987. That's why they have to play a3. In that case, we just take, because uh, we're buying time with a tempi, so we take on c3, break the pawn structure, do that with check, and make short castle. We'd like to put this rook on e8, and to get a very, very active approach in the game. After queen f3, rook e8, they can't take on f5, of course, because of knight e6, and you win the queen with check. They play bishop e2, and look at this, queen d7, over supporting this queen, and going with the knight c6, knight a5 ideas afterwards. So after bishop e2, knight c6, desperate attempt by white to get rid of this annoying bishop. No, we don't want to give them that privilege. So we go with bishop g6, long castles, and knight a5. And now you threaten knight g5, now you threaten knight f2, you threaten uh, like a whole bunch of things that in order to come up with some knight b3 checkmate afterwards. So artificial way of fighting against this bishop. Uh, actually, that means that this rook is about to die. Knight c4, rook e3. But Grandmaster Vescovi from Brazil uh, wasn't even interested in taking any material and played knight e2. After queen b7, rook b8, played queen b5, and this guy couldn't stop checkmate and resigned. This game was played in World Junior Championship 
and you can see for example white player is a very solid player and he lost this game like complete passer what i'm actually trying to tell you icelandic gambit is very creative opening full of possibilities and uh, just like i told you previously uh, you can uh, win so many and such a big number of games if your opponents are not well prepared and usually they're not so the only move after uh, knight f uh, after d4 bishop before is bishop d2 you play queen e7 a very valuable queen on e file goes after the king on e1 and we now just want to make either a short castle in some variations or a long castle followed of course knight c6 followed by long castle and that's exactly the problem of this creation looks like knight c6 and long castle uh, we actually know that it, that's basic plan by black and that we all we want always want to go for that but simply uh, white doesn't count on these moves they just believe that if at any point you play knight c6 they will have a fork with e5 and that's a winning position so they even reject to think in many variations and possibilities about things like this uh, anyways let's get started with some lines i want to start with bishop e2 covering king and seemingly wants to play knight f3 short castle to somehow complete development you play short castle you now threaten to take on c4 problem of taking on c4 now uh, was that he can go with for example queen a4 and in that case some of these bishops would die so after castles now you threaten bishops for d5 bishop g4 look at these monster bishops bishop b4 queen b4 queen d2 and here i found a couple of games uh, but actually i came up with an improvement knight a6 with a possibility to uh, drag both of my rooks on the open files e8 and d8 breaking the center with c6 holding the queen on b4 with the knight on a6 i believe the black looks just great uh, instead of bishop e2 they can also go with queen e2 uh, this is move that is suggested even by computer and in the beginning uh, even these top computers like stockfish commodo will say white is great even though it looks good because uh, kind of completes his development placing the queen and opposing the queen on the same file opposing the queen on e7 uh, looks like it's good we play knight c6 they go knight f3 and we go castles this is exactly the point of this line because after d5 who would say that even though they made this fork seemingly strong fork that is about to i don't know when or uh, the game or just force us to resign immediately no you don't have to care about that you just have to know the next move next move is move of fantastic importance and it's almost like the refutation of the whole concept with the queen e2 not almost it's the refutation rook h to e8 a beautiful move i came up with this move uh, in the analysis i actually tried uh, tried this variation in one of my blitz games had some practical uh, problems to remember uh, all these variations in uh, short time controls and then afterwards when i just had to improve my analysis i came up with this beautiful breakage to e8 move what what's the point if they take bishop on e6 you go queen c5 and all of a sudden these rooks are amazing and they're about to lose if they take on c6 you go queen d6 and you threaten bishop g4 bishop c4 you even pressure bishop and d2 they can't hold the pressure if they play knight c3 you take and when they take you play queen c5 all the time you just want to have this idea of um, exploiting that active rook on e8 and that's the point um, of novelty in the move number eight rook h to e8 so after a long castles bishop d5 queen is threatened bishop e4 rook takes d3 queen c4 queen a2 and i analyze this position and according to even some superficial analysis this is just fantastic for black in the worst case scenario you can always get an exchange back and you would be two pawns up plus king on c1 is weak that's why after bishop before bishop d2 queen e7 they have to take 
we take and they offer us to exchange coins. If they play knight d2, what happened in like a big number of my blood games, we go with knight c6. Um, so you should never, absolutely never fear any d5, otherwise don't play this opening. Actually, then don't play this game. You probably should go and switch to bowling. So basically, after knight c6, knight f3, long castles. And if d5, uh, this is a nice thing. In a game, Sokol of Spillman played in Spain uh, in late 80s. This guy played bishop g4. He won that game with the black pieces in a great style, in a very small um, um, amount of moves. But basically here, there is a huge novelty. Knight takes d5. That's an improvement over that game. And after c takes d5, bishop d5. Uh, you got a fantastic bishop that threatens to take on f3 and weaken the knight on d2. You want to play rook h to e8 afterwards. Uh, you would like to go with, I don't know, to occupy the center by knight on c6 afterwards. Uh, Black's position is crushing. It's absolutely uh, um, not holdable by white. So after bishop e2 in this game, bishop takes on f3. And you now just have a pressure along the d-file. The guy captures on f3. If bishop takes, check. If bishop, if king goes here, you take the knight. If bishop goes on e2, you just go knight d4. So just like you see, simply they can't breathe in this variation. And that's what I like about the Icelandic gambit. g takes f3, you just play rook h to e8. They can't make castle because it, this king is pretty much tied up for the knight on d2. And uh, they just fall apart. I also uh, want to show you something in one uh, online game that I played. I made this improvement of knight d5 and uh, my opponent didn't want to uh, take that, didn't want to accept. He actually realized how dangerous my position uh, starts to be uh, and uh, he played queen c2. Uh, I played queen e7. That's an important move. That's a crucial move because I, I was remembering my analysis and I uh, like this move a lot. Point of queen e7 is to bring my queen back. Usually people don't think about these defensive attacking moves or like, like queen e7, like back attacking moves. Uh, because you now threaten bishop f5 check to win the queen on c2 with check. Or you just want to go with knight b4 with a tempi. And that's the problem after castles, knight b4, queen b1, queen f6 threatening bishop f5, and they can't hold the pressure. Once again, after queen b4, uh, knight d2, knight c6, knight f3 castles, d5 is refuted after knight d5. So that's why after queen b4, they have to play queen d2. You play knight c6. If they play d5, you go long castles. That's the beauty of this line. You don't care about this fork. You just want to recapture by knight. Afterwards, go with that knight c2. Uh, you just want to bring your... Uh, so they have problems with a king exposed. We just want to go with rook h to e8. They have terrible position. So that's why after knight c6, they usually play knight c3, hoping to somehow complete development and castle. We go long castles, they have to go d5. Here, I just want to show you uh, two approaches. Uh, Smerdan in his analysis and book says, go with knight e5 and gives even two exclaim marks on that move. Uh, he says that it favors black. Um, I like it, I mean, it's, it's very nice. But here, I would actually go with something practically more interesting. It's bishop g4. It goes after the long castle. And let me just show you a game between uh, I am Kuif from Netherlands and a uh, famous guy who came up with Trompovsky in um, early 80s, uh, Julian Hodgson. Hodgson, who was famous for this uh, Scandinavian Portuguese and of course his great tactical style of play. Rook h to e8, bishop e2, bishop f5, long castles. Uh, look at the move, knight a5. And you probably can't even figure out what's the real point of this combination. But the thing is, after, for, in the game was g4, but let me just show you if knight b5 looks like, oh my goodness, this guy's about to save his position 
and to trade the queens off. But look what happens here. Queen b3, what a nice move. Uh, they can't take because it's checkmate. So don't forget about this mating pattern with the knight and the bishop. And the point is, you just threaten to take on a2. But there is even better line here. There is even better line after knight b5. It's rook takes e2. If uh, you play, for example, uh, queen b4, uh, then you just go with rook c2, and you can just go with rook c4, get the queen back, and you're like completely winning. Uh, but if they go with, uh, for example, queen e2, you go rook e8, queen f1, because queen has to be uh, to, to defend this pawn on c4. Queen to b3, what a fantastic move. Once again, you threaten checkmate, you want to take here, and they want to come up with this mating picture. This queen b3 is a very nice idea you should be familiar with. If knight e2, queen c4, knight c3, and boom, queen a2. Once again, a beautiful uh, mating pattern coped with the knight on a5 and bishop on uh, f5. Beautiful trick with... Uh, showing you this mating pattern and how important it is to have like control of the light squares here. In the game of Kuif and Hodgson was g4. Hodgson, just like in previous example, this guy also, like Vascov in his game, kept this bishop and this monster bishop on g6. Knight h3, logical move to complete development. Knight e7. I like this move. I give it a, like a nice exclaim mark because it goes towards b3 for the mating. Knight b1 and Hodgson played queen b3. Point is, uh, you threaten to take on a2 followed by knight b3. They can take on a5 because of checkmate on c2. And if bishop d3, queen a2, now you're now threaten to win the queen. Queen b4, rook e2. What a nice move because if you take knight b3, and if they don't take but play like this move, then you just have this almost mate with the knight b3. So just like you see, this d4 move doesn't seem to be working and actually gives uh, black a very rich and game full of possibilities. Bishop e2 is a passive move. I don't expect uh, that variation to happen so much in your games. Uh, mainly d4, like I said. But those who play, you just play knight c6 and you control d4. You don't give them d4 anymore. Knight f3, and of course, uh, just because we take this position that way, we just go with bishop c5, so they can never push d4 any longer. Castles, and now we put a king on a short castle. d3, rook e8, knight bd2. Uh, here I just want to stop, because once again, there are some games with bishop f5 and rook e2 ideas, uh, but... Uh, a5 is a nice move. It's a typical plan in many uh, type of uh, positions in English opening, in e5 openings, in many, many uh, different kinds of systems. When your bishop stands on c5, you always want to keep the shelter on a7 uh, playing a5 or a6. Here a5 is aimed against the knight on b3, one chili with some bishop a7 and a4, but also uh, a5 wants to give you some a4 uh, advance on the queen side. So after knight b3, bishop b6. Smerdan in his book says bishop a7. I like bishop b6 a little bit more logic, um, logical because uh, I just want to play some... Uh, I'll show you. For example, let's say after bishop b6 they go a4 to stop because we threaten a4. Typical way of fighting against the knights on the edge of the board. So a4, and now you play knight b4. What's the point of knight b4? I want to play c6 and bishop c7. That's why, uh, because I like to keep the, my rook on a8 uh, active. That's why I like this plan with c6 and bishop c7 a little bit more. After d4, bishop f5, knight e1, c6. Af after bishop c7, queen d6, rook a d8, with knight here, bishop here, a knight can, that can go on e4 eventually, rook on the open file. I, I'm absolutely of opinion that this is very hard in practice for white. And finally, let's go and let's actually check that last move. Uh, last 
but not the least, actually, that's, in my opinion, the best and practically only move that can hold this position. It's knight f3. Now they can go with d4. Uh, now they would like to, in some lines, go with bishop e2 because you can hold it like in previous line with knight c6 and bishop c5. So it's a very, very uh, clever attempt by white if they want to uh, fight against the Icelandic gambit. We go queen e7. Uh, it maybe looks a little bit strange because we, we've just blocked the bishop on f8. Uh, but it shows our plan. First of all, it gives us some knight c6 long castle ideas, typical for uh, Icelandic gambit. But also, at the moment, I'm just threatening to take on c4 and to get the pawn back with full initiative. So, queen e2 is the only move. We go with knight c6. They have to go with d4. Um, of all positions, that I analyzed here, I'm of opinion this one is like uh, the only one that can give some play to white players, or uh, actually they can just hope to, to be able to defend this game somehow. And here, uh, bishop g4 is very tempting and gives you certainly some compensation and just um, like Smerdan said in, in the past, it was considered to be the main line. Uh, but some recent analysis showed that after you play bishop g4 here, after bishop e3, white is a little bit better. Uh, although, we will go with the bishop f5 line. I know that it's not so aesthetic at first glance, and not like in the spirit of this opening to exchange the queens, but actually the real spirit of this opening is initiative. So, whether we have to keep the queens on board or to trade them off, you just have to be happy because you like the activity of your pieces. Uh, point of this bishop f5 is that I want to make the long castle. I want to <clears throat> take control of the light squares and I want to play knight before at some point. Uh, if they play a3 to stop knight before, uh, Smerdan in his book said knight a5. I'm not a big fan of this move, where he prepares c5 and goes with knight b3. It's, it's a nice, okay move, but I actually prefer my classic approach. Long castles, man. I want to take on d4. I want to move my queen. I want to play rook e8 afterwards. They have to exchange queens. Now I'm opening up rook h to e8. You go with bishop e3, rook h to e8, knight c3, bishop goes back to f8. You can't make long castle because of knight a5. Uh, I'm threatening knight g4 myself. Uh, so if bishop b2, knight g4, of course, uh, if you play h3, uh, you simply lose the pawn, so you can hold the pressure. That's why I believe that long castle is a nice improvement over Smerdan's analysis there. And finally, uh, if queen e7, bishop takes e7, and bishop e3. If a3, now knight a5 would be good, because now we intend to play c5, and now we just want to place, like after a long or short castle, uh, both of these rooks on e8 and d8. Uh, after queen e7, bishop e7, most common approach is bishop e3. Knight b4 threatening knight c2 check, and they go with knight a3. White has just managed to develop some of his pieces, but the knight on a3 seems like a uh, uh, bit off the board and on the edge. And also, they have lots of problems with the light squares. Weak, weak, weak. This knight on b4 is a monster. We do have this, we do have this great bishop on f5, so definitely we have a nice compensation. In my opinion, after a castle, uh, you just have, all you have to do is to put your rook on e8 and on d8. Uh, I'll show you something. Analyze position where they play h3 in order to secure this bishop with a preventing knight g4. c6, simply I'm fighting against some d5 ideas, bishop e2, rook f2, e8, rook a d8, and bishop d6. I'd like to analyze the um, uh, final position with you. Uh, I am definitely of opinion that black has a nice compensation here for the given pawn. We would like to go with um, 
h6 and keep the shelter for the light square bishop on h7. We can go with b6 and break it with c5. Uh, I just want to tell you that knight on a3 looks kind of weak. Our knight on b4 looks uh, pretty active since it goes after d8 to pawn and controls d3 and c2 squares. Bishop on f5 looks good and rook on e8 controls the open file. Uh, considering all these facts, I am absolutely uh, willing to, uh, to to say for this position that black looks at least uh, at least uh, with a position with a huge compensation, if not more than that. Uh, I enjoy this type of game, and even though we're down a pawn. Uh, having the rook on a1 to be tied up for the a2 pawn, having the knight on a3 on the edge of the board, uh, having our knight on b4 that controls these light squares, I'm definitely uh, of opinion that black looks uh, good here.